Hello, it's Jane here, and I'm really excited today because this now is the second instalment of my Potions from the Plot series, which I started, I did my first one about four, five, six weeks ago, and I'll put a link up here if you want to go back and watch it. Basically, what I want to do is while we're all harvesting and preserving and conserving all our goods from our garden at this time of the year to see us through the winter months ahead, um, it's also a good time to be uh, drying up your herbs, collecting your flower petals, you know, drying your lavender, crisping up your comfrey, <laughs> so that we are able to then use them in our gift making or craft making later on in the year in time for that big event that happens in December. You know what I mean. So last time we did that we talked about what I was gathering, why I was gathering it and today what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a little look at how well that's worked, if everything's ready to move on to the next step and today I'm going to be talking about, okay, if it's worked, how I'm going to look after the precious treasure now until I need to use it and that is either going to be by storing it dry or setting it in oil to make an infusion because an infusion is something that you will need to have to hand if you want to start making things like your balms and your salves and your creams later on so yeah so join me today that's what I'm going to be doing also also and this is doubly excited about this I've got a really what I think is a really good invitation for you all to sort of join in and collaborate and take part in what could really be oh, what could really be quite a nice series so watch out for that oh and also yeah there's um <laughs> almost and almost I won't say near-death experience but there's a rather rather close brush with gravity that happens halfway through see if you can spot that Okay, but anyway, enjoy. Okay, if you remember, one of the last things we did with the herbs that we needed and wanted was to tie them up in bundles and dry them in the shed. So we're going to take these down and go and see how successful that's been. way of drying that we used was actually to just open dry them in these racks and you remember they don't look very pretty do they um, and actually that's done a really really good job of it so what we're going to do now is have a little bit of a compare and contrast and then show you what we're going to do with them next okay so here I am back in Rich's corner <laughs> on a day which I must say doesn't feel very autumnal at all beautiful sunshine and a slight breeze which might be a problem for what I'm going to do next but what I want to show you and what today is about really is um, moving on from the first stage where we collected the herbs and the flowers and whatever it was we wanted to use because remember I was saying there's nothing worse than getting to the stage later on in the year I'm really going to try and avoid saying the word later on in the year where you want to make presents and you realise you haven't just got a handful of calendula or rose petals or something like that. So we need to start thinking about it now. So last time what we did, we gathered the leaves, the herbs, whatever it was that we want to be using later on and we set them out to dry. So as you've seen we put some in the shed hanging up in bundles which are these and some in the drying racks and really they've just all worked really well. Um, if you remember I don't quite know what I'm going to do, oh I, actually I do know what I'm going to do with this. Do you remember I said about the woodruff? This was bright green 
and of course this breeze isn't going to help at all is it but I'm going to try without them getting blown away this was bright green and did not smell of anything and if you look at it now it looks just like well it is a dead leaf but the smell coming from that now I wish you could smell it it's like it's almost like marzipan it's absolutely beautiful now last time I did say that one of its common names was um, ladies bed straw I might be wrong with that because there are various sorts of herbs that we used for strewing and sweetening the ladies boudoir and they were all known as ladies bed straw but I've got a feeling somewhere that Woodruff was known as that as well so what I'm going to do with that I do know what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to make um, like little pillow sachets and drawer sachets. So I'm going to use that just for the perfume, not for any medicinal uses at all, perfume. So that will be made into bags. And then let me just show you this. Oh, I'll move that there. What I've got here is the comfrey that I dried in um, a rack. So as you can see, it's got holes in like a soil sieve. And that... And that's my microphone again. It's a bit obtrusive there, isn't it? Keeps catching my eye like a naughty kitten. <laughs> um, you can see that's dried and it's retained its colour. It's completely dry. I don't know. Crispy. Okay. Completely dry. Where is this? Where is it? Is this the comfrey that I hung? Or is this the bait? No, this is the comfrey that I hung up. It was younger, younger leaves. It's still actually a little bit spiky, as are they, as are the ones that have been air dried. But that's turned yellow. And the only thing I can think that is, is that it was at the end of the hanging rail in the shed. So it was nearer the window. And I think that's bleached. And in fact, again, I don't know if you can see the slightly greener parts here where it's been covered. Um, so when they tell you to dry in a cool, dark place, literally, that's what you need to be doing because otherwise you're going to lose the colour. It doesn't matter so much in something like comfrey because I'm going to be making that into a salve and it's just going to take on whatever colour goes into it. So, you know, if it's that colour instead of a, a slimy green. It's not going to matter too much. But you imagine if you're drying something like your rose petals or something where you want to retain the colour, your calendula, as much as possible. Make sure it's in a dark place because any sun at all is going to start bleaching it. But anyway, that is the comfrey. But that's the difference, you see. that It makes a difference what environment it goes into. So calendula I'm coming on to. The other one I wanted to show you were these that were the bay. This is why I wasn't too sure about that comfrey. I thought it might be that one. Oh, what's happened to him? <gasps> it's got very dry at the end. And this has dried um, quite leathery, this one that's come off here. So that, it feels like it's not actually dry enough yet, but that is now, can you see it's not crisping up? It's not just breaking up. That, you can store those as whole leaves at this point. You probably could get it drier, but I think that would be okay, okay, for now. So I'm gonna, I don't wanna get them all mixed up. Right, I can tell clearly my comfrey is different to my woodruff. My bay is different to my woodruff. Also, the other culinary herbs that I did, my sage, again, is that crispy? I'll do the crispy test. Little bit, little bit. Again, <laughs> on the inside, it's greener than the sage on the outside, which again, it might be that it's not thoroughly dry yet on the inside, but I would say it's a, it just hasn't received the outside light, so it hasn't been bleached as much. What I think I will do though, with my culinary herbs, so my bay, my sage, and my rosemary, I'm gonna leave those for a bit longer. They're gonna be fine. You know, all I'm gonna be doing with them anyway is removing them from the stems, chopping them up a bit and making them into herbal mixes. So I might, I might use some rosemary and soap, but that's not what I'm going to do today. So these herbs can be drying for longer, as can my thyme, which has dried absolutely beautifully. 
Now do be careful if you're drying something like thyme and it's in a shed watch it doesn't actually start dropping into your shed my phone's just going off excuse me okay now the neighbors come over to um torture mike so <laughs> just distractions abound there'll be an elephant trotting around in the background in a minute but i tell you what it doesn't take much for me to forget what that, for me to forget what i'm talking about I'm going to try and carry on. Right, okay, yes, so what I was saying about your thyme, anything, especially with a smaller leaf that's going to dry quicker, um, make sure you've got something underneath it. If you're worried about losing your leaves, either have something underneath it or dry it in a paper bag. It'll get plenty of air in a nice big paper bag and then anything that falls off is going to be saved in the paper bag. So I'm going to put those over that because I'm not going to be dealing with my culinary herbs today they're fine they can just keep drying and when it comes to it I can um, just crunch them up and make my mixes what I do want to do today though is show you what I'm going to do with my calendula which is basically I've already beheaded it now I'm going to pull all its hair off okay so <laughs> and again this is something that is best done either indoors or on a very still day. Not a day when the breeze is coming from the wherever that is and is probably going to blow everything over. I did have lots of lovely pretty little bowls that I was going to bring up to do this in but I forgot them. So I've got these nice reused strawberry boxes out of the greenhouse and it's actually quite good because you're going to be able to see what I'm doing. And all I'm going to do is literally off. That's it. Now actually this is quite a good idea to um, have something with a steep side, especially if you are outside, especially if there's breeze, because then if there is something going to blow into it, it's not going to blow it off the table. It's going to stay in there. So this is actually quite a nice job to do. Now there'll be someone out there who'll say to me, Jane, you don't need to pull all the petals off, you can keep them on. And Jane, why are you throwing the actual seed heads away or the centre of the flower? Because you can use that for something. Well, if that's the case, let me know in the comments below because I'd love to know. I'm not professing to know everything there is to know about calendula. I'm just showing you what I've done before. Okay. I tell you what, I was really, really... Um, impressed by the comments on the last video so many of you do so many things with your own herbs and and vegetables and you don't just make toiletries and things like that which i'm going to do but you make ointments and salves and tinctures i love that word and you know i'm quite humbled you know, to hear of how many people out there have got that much knowledge so I've got a bit of an invitation to those of you who would like to take part in doing something like this. I was going to save it to the end, but I may as well tell you now. Well, I'm doing my calendula. This is such a lovely job to do, especially when the sun's out like this. I can just about hear chickens in the background. I don't know if you can. Plane going over. Um, and crows. Always crows. Um, yeah, I thought because of all the wonderful information. Can you see how they're collecting there? That's the other nice thing about having this box. You can see how it's filling up. All the, the uh, knowledgeable people out there, I thought it would be nice to have over the winter months, some sort of collaboration whereby if you wanted to, you could make, I don't know, a short video, three, four, five minutes long, just talking about something that you've made, so a salve, a herb, a tincture, do a little demo if you want to, uh, tell me where your ideas come from, why you do it, does it work, is it something you swear by, is it a recipe that's been handed down through your family, through generations, I'd love to hear about that, I'd love to hear about it. and even if you don't do a demo, tell me of something that you have made you know something that interesting that we could all learn from 
and I thought that would be nice to include in this little potions from the plot segment so when you're all bored of me telling you which you're probably already <laughs> talking about infusing Michelangelo leaves we can go over to someone else and give someone a bit of a shot someone else a bit of a shot and you know hear about what they do with their things I think that would be a really lovely thing to do and a great way to share and of course we might get to find other channels we might get to find other um, blogs and vlogs people who've been doing it for years what do you think would any of you be interested in doing that let me know right I'm going to get the rest of these done and then I'll come back to you just look at that it's like gold isn't it it's like precious precious golden thread anyway that's there and in there you might spot the odd bit of lavender because while I was sitting there <laughs> I deheaded the lavender as well so I've got my lovely dry lavender I've got my lovely dry calendula let's show you what I'm gonna do next <laughs> So here I am back at my little table of delights and I'm going to be quite honest with you and I'm quite cross about this the um, microphone went off in the middle of me filming and I didn't realize it until I finished it all so actually I've just finished filming checked the card back and of course you can't hear a word I'm saying which could be a good thing but let me just go over it once more okay as you could see I had my lovely calendula leaves and lavender in these pots the only problem was the um, pots have got holes underneath so the lavender did tend to escape a bit so I put it put those back down there into these little jars now when you are um, saving your flowers your herbs your petals you need to make sure they are absolutely bone dry now all you're missing really is me trying to tip this from that box into there but oh my goodness the smell is just beautiful I've been sitting oh there's a calendula leaf there oh, I'm gonna leave it be um I should imagine I've been sitting here now for about half an hour an hour just deadheading or taking the petals off that calendula and lavender I can go to sleep any minute my hands are now infused with that beautiful lavender scent so I know they are bone dry also what's left of the calendula there was a lot more I'll show you what happened to it in a minute <laughs> um, is bone dry and you can tell that just by feeling them with your fingers as you go through if you oh my word <laughs> well I don't know what that would have done to the viewing figures if that hit me on the head but there you go <laughs> that. Well, I'm a bit worried that this one fell off before but fortunately you, you get a bit sort of complacent because they all just fall off around you you don't expect them to actually hit you on the shoulder oh well that wasn't in the original film right okay oh I'm worried now there's a rogue squirrel up there throwing things at me I think oh. if you are not sure whether your things are dry or not you can feel them but if you're a little bit nervous about it you can also store them in your paper bags as we talked about before envelopes of varying sizes depending how much you've got that should let them breathe a little bit obviously there's plastic lined envelopes don't want to use one of those just solid paper envelopes if you get me um the other thing is you know if you get um jewelry or beads or some little trinkets you might get one of these gauze bags these are great keep hold of these because not only are they good to sort of 
you know, pass on with other presents and things like that. But they keep them nice and dry. I mean, you could make your own, make your own with a bit of gauze or a bit of muslin, a bit of cotton. Just make, you know, a rectangle, sew three ends, tie it at the top, and you've got like your own tea bag. I bought that lavender there about three years ago. We visited a lavender farm and that has stayed beautiful in there. It hasn't gone mouldy. It's got air going to it. So that's a good idea to store them. But also, um, I know Paul from Richard and Paul has talked about these quite a lot. You can get the little silica sachets that you very often get inside if you buy a pair of shoes or a bag or something like that. And they just soak up any damp in the atmosphere. So they're great for popping into something like that. But really, if you're sure that they're dry, they should be okay. I know they're dry. I know they're dry. Let me show you what I did with the majority of these. Again, you didn't see this. Well, you could have seen it, but you wouldn't have heard what I was on about. What I've done. I have poured about three quarters of my stash of calendula petals into this jar. And then I have topped it up with sweet almond oil. Now, it's one of those things, excuse me, <clears throat> it's one of those things that you put the petals in and you put the oil on top and it looks like you've got enough and you swish it round a bit and the petals sink and go to the bottom a bit. So you put a bit more oil on. You know, be very careful. It's deceptive. It's a bit like, you know, when you put spinach in a pan and it's overflowing the pan and it's on for about, it's on the heat for about a minute and all of a sudden it's shrunk right down. It's a bit like that when you're adding oil to things and you want to make sure that you've got enough oil so the petals can circulate nicely. You don't want them all in a soggy lump that so you can give them a shake. You don't want too much oil because you don't want to dilute it too much, but that now those calendula petals, as we speak, are infusing that oil with all of their beautiful calendula goodness. And if I leave that now for, I would say ideally six weeks, somewhere cool and dark, preferably. <laughs> Sorry, it's got oil on, it's lovely. Oh, it smells of the lavender, it's really nice. Um, and then that infused oil is going to be ready for the next step of our gift making, which is going to be um, the balms, the soaps, that sort of thing. Okay, so I've used sweet almond oil. You can use sunflower oil, olive oil if you want to, if you're feeling a bit fancy, uh, but a light carrier oil is what you want, okay? Because that is then gonna form the base, as I say, of our balms and our salves and our soaps. So get this done now. Like I say, it's all about preparing things now so that you're not rushing around like a headless chicken at the time thinking, where on earth can I get some um, calendula infused <laughs> sweet almond oil from? You've got your own, but you need to get it started now. What I'm also going to do before I go today is I'm going to do the same with the comfrey. Again, you need to make sure it's properly dry. So I showed you before these ones. I'm not going to use those. I'm going to use these crispy, 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 crispy ones, because I know they couldn't get much dry. They're pretty much desiccated. Um, but if you put anything damp in with your oil, you run the risk of it fermenting, of your oil fermenting, and you don't want that. So make sure it's nice and dry. Okay, so after <laughs> another technical mishap, I hope that's been really useful to you. I'm really pleased I've got things underway now. I've got my little store ongoing. Um, I've also, but I haven't got them down here today, I've also picked a whole load of rose hips from my back garden. So I am going to be preparing those. I probably won't do a video on it, but I'm going to be, um, I've picked those. I'm going to be chopping them in half because they're quite chunky, deseeding them and drying them in a dehydrator. So they will be good for things like rose hip tea and maybe other things as we get towards that time of year. So yeah, I, I might put things up on Instagram or Facebook about them, but uh, I'll keep you in touch with what I'm doing. But yes, let me know how you're getting on. Are you joining in? Have you considered what you might make? <gasps> two more things, two more things. Talking about preparation. If you are thinking of 
doing a bit of soap or even a bit of balm and you're a bit handy with your fingers, have a little go at crochet because the easiest thing to do in the world is to crochet a square. Okay, like that. That's a bit wobbly. That is 100% cotton. It's dishcloth cotton, to be honest. But actually, it's really, really soft. The only thing is, with it being dishcloth cotton, it does eventually start to wear a bit thin. But it's beautifully soft. So you can do that. Granny square. Okay, little granny square. I didn't put a hook on that one. Um, again, just crochet a square. It looks a bit wobbly. It's been all creased up in my bag. But that's got a little hook on Look, like that. So if you come to do your soap, just imagine when it's done, how nice it would be put on top of that or wrapped inside that with a piece of raffia and a little label. That'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? And uh, the other, oh, the other finishing touch, sounds daft to say finishing touch, but start it now, is, you see, I did all this. I demonstrated all this on the last blooming video <laughs> that you can't hear. I managed to get hold of a few last minute calendula flowers. You can see the petals on that have gone the wrong way, but no matter. And a few bits of lavender that I have put inside a book and I'm going to put under a heavy object so that when I come to gift things up, I'll have something like that to be able to put on a label or something nice, little card or something. So, so yeah, little finishing touches. Sound like finishing touches, but you've got to prepare them now. Okay, so let me know what you're doing. Um, have a think about the invitation. It would be absolutely lovely if you could. I know people are nervous about filming themselves. You don't even have to film yourself. If you could just show something that you've made. If you want to do a demo, absolutely brilliant. If you just want to tell the history of a recipe that you use, um, maybe it's been passed down the family, absolutely brilliant, completely up to you. But it would just be wonderful to be able to share this a little bit wider um, because of all your comments from the last potions video. Uh, I know how much knowledge there is out there, so let's get it all together and share it between each other. I think that would be absolutely lovely. If you do want to do it, you can email me. There's an email link below. Um, so yeah, just email me and I'll tell you how to go about doing it. Doesn't have to be a long film, two, three, four, five, you know, five little minutes and uh, we can insert it in and, and see what everyone else is doing. I thought that'd be lovely. Anyway, okay, with that, I'm really hoping this mic's work this time. Otherwise, I'm just going to put music on or that pigeon. He's been very vocal throughout. He's probably the one who threw the apple at me. <laughs> Well, the sun's gone in now, um, so that's always the time for me to stop talking. Have a look at the Instagram link, have a look at the Facebook link, come along and say hello. Thank you so much if you've just subscribed in the last week or so. We've had a sudden influx of subscribers who I think a lot of you have come over from Liz. So big thanks up to Liz at By The Farm. Um, it's lovely to have you here. Um, I do do some gardening sometimes, so do have a little look at the back catalogue and see what we've been up to. Okay, but for now, I'm going to say goodbye. Keep in touch, get your comments in there, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye.